So at the conference, you are actually presenting your poster. That's why it's a poster presentation. You're not just standing there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hopefully not. Or, or, or drinking coffee somewhere else when you make it your poster. Um, you're hopefully, nice big smile on your face, okay? Um, welcoming <laughs> people to come in and look at your poster. These are actually, some of these are from um, research conference last year and also some from the uh, PGR conference last year. So, uh, sorry you probably recognise some people there. Um, first thing you've got to have, you've got to have your presenters, post presenters toolkit. Okay, one side poster, what do you need for your toolkit alongside you? What do you need? A little small list. Why is your hand up? Can go for it? Yeah. A pointing stick? Uh, yeah, possibly. You need a notepad and a pen. Notepad and a notepad. pen, absolutely essential. Yeah. And the notepad's very important because you might have something else which we're not going to mention yet. Yeah. But you can make notes about what people said or talked about. Yeah. Ready to remind yourself to send an email to them to contact them. Yeah. Card with your name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So even if they, go, they don't go away with anything, or even someone comes past, can't talk to you, Give them a card. Yeah. So business cards, very important. Then you could also have the A4 size of your poster. Yeah, you absolutely. I think A4 size are vital, even a little folder. Mm -hmm. And if you have to go away for a while, some conferences there are poster sessions by specific times. Others, it's more general every single coffee break. Yeah. And you can't be there every single coffee break. You need your coffee at a conference. Yeah. Uh, no coffee will die on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the worst place I've ever been to was Anglia Rescue in one conference. We had a morning session from 9 till 12 o'clock with no coffee break. No, I'm good. Um, so you need, if you're not there, you need something for people to pick up a leaflet, like the A4. Yep. Even if it's just literally a small little one, um, doesn't have to be fancy, literally um, an A4 plastic folder, you put lots of copies in. Also, uh, what kind of copies do you need? Two types, posh and cheap. Okay, yeah. so you keep you put the, the cheap ones, which are both photocopies, black and white photocopies, in there. You keep one or two posh ones if you want to have a proper one. Go away with. Otherwise, you spend a lot of money with paper. So think to yourself: if someone comes to talk to me, I want to be able to give them a really nice posh one. Right. Anything else you might want to have on you that helps? I would probably mostly cover most of the things, but certainly I think also one thing that comes up in some research are aspects to do with clothing. So um, this lady <laughs> did a, a study, same poster, uh, the poster is identical, but she wore colours that coordinated one time and colours that didn't color, that clash next time. And more people visited her when the colour coordinated the when it clashed. I did a small little paper, quite a fun little paper to see. You wouldn't believe it, but it's true. You know, so there's that, it, that glaring thing. Look smart and professional. Okay. I was going to show a, photo, a, a nice photograph I've got of one of our clans lecturers um, who remain nameless. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> if anybody, any, any of those uh, Dr. Pope will know what I mean to the scruffy. Um, nice. The thing, thing is, is that what you present um, is not just yourself, but also your research. Um, and also, smart and professional is key. Stand by your poster. No people, no interest. If you are not by the poster, uh, these are ones more, more general ones. But basically, everyone's looking at a copy, um, glancing by. They're not talking to anybody. It's dead. Um, one too late, he says from the because they're not going to stand by their posters. Um, you've got to stand out in the crowd. Wow. Um, <laughs> and the wow. bigger ones, you have really got to stand out in the crowd. The only way to do that, again, also a lot of those will be sectioned and things like that, but crazy. Those are more likely medical conferences, they often go for thousand seaters, things like that in the system. 
But if you don't stand out, if you're not near your poster, you're going to lose. Uh, also, notice a lot of these are bigger posters. Those are much more kind of uh, more kind of the um, AO territory, or the ones that as you come in, they unroll them. They're big that that length, so more you can put on them more. Um, don't stand in front of your poster. Okay, if you're standing in front of your poster, like I'm standing in front of the screen, you're not looking at the poster. You're looking at me. Because I'm saying, hi, how are you, and else, and uh, ignoring that. So don't stand in front of the post. It's, it's, it's extremely simple. Um, the classic thing about, um, even if you're doing marketing, if you're marketing in a store and you've got the information, you always stand to one side. If you stand to one side, you can see things, but you can still interrupt them, grab them. What you don't ever do is stand behind the desk. As soon as you stand behind the desk, you're putting a barrier in front. So, desk to one side, hold the extra. You on the other side just stand to grab people as they come past and talk to them. Um, stand by the side. Let people read it first. So, don't necessarily ask people questions until they've had time to read through the poster. Let people talk to you to be in the talk. You can grab them once you feel <coughs> they've finished the finish poster, they're about to go away. But let them read first. Use your post to support answers to questions. It's there for you to use it. So if there's something they're talking about, you can point things out. So very much using it. So it's not there just for like, looking at them and that's it, they feel go away. Use it to engage people talking about your research. As you can see, talking about things. It's also why things need to be big enough to be visible. So they need to be people need to be seen them quite quickly. Be passionate about your work, but not over the top. Okay? So it's important to be know your stuff, know what you're doing, but know when to be gent back off a little bit. Again, but these things are things to learn for time. Um, on the other hand, most of the time people will get bored or a bit too much, they'll walk away. But some people can go over the top sometimes, so be careful. One issue quite often can be engaging with one person at a time. Um, if they're really interested, they'll come back. Don't try and talk to several people at once. If someone interrupts, say, oh, can you ask, can I ask a question? Just say, uh, so I'm talking to this person a moment, can you wait a moment? I I'm going to be here for a while. Uh, but if you want a copy, here it is, my, here's my contact details. So use the opportunity. And it really, this is kind of um, where it goes from being a poster presentation to networking, but also to marketing. Okay, so the person is the opportunity for you to talk about your research that someone from a conference might be interested in offering you a postdoc. So if you want a postdoc, you've got to entice people into your current research or future research. So most people will be come back. If they don't come back, that's life. Um, give yourself and viewers space if you can. So don't crowd in on people. Different people have different tolerances for personal space. So if I'm kind of talking to you like this, <laughs> sorry, but some people can be very uncomfy. I used to have an uncle like that. Literally you come very, very close. I just didn't like it. Um, so you give people their space. Um, it's about social things and social mores. What we do in the UK is not the same as abroad. It's like you go to China, you give your card with two hands, not one hand. You give it with one hand, that's implying it's not worth anything. By giving a present, you give it with two hands, not one hand. And also be wrapped in red. So there are ways of, ways of doing things properly in different cultures. If you go to international conferences, it's worthwhile finding out what is the culture for that country in terms of how to do things. Um, I, I thought it was quite good. Otherwise, block someone else's poster. Okay? So, uh, if you think about posters all in a row, uh, don't worry about someone else's poster, it's not your worry. <laughs> um, stand to one side, to one side, prefer left, right or left. If it blocks someone else, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you've got their poster, not yours. Um, <laughs> it's like, um, well, the first thing I ever got taught about marketing was anything that's not underneath the table is up for grabs. <laughs> so once you're really naughty marketing, people stealing mugs, you name it. Um, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Um, 
The other one also is after the conference. What do you do with your poster after the conference? Does it sit in a drawer? Does it go on your wall? It might well do. Might well go to the university wall somewhere, but it's a publication. It's not, okay, ironically, probably easier to publish than your paper, your oral presentation. Your oral presentation could go on slideshare.net. Your poster can equally go on to a PDF file, researchgate.net or academia.edu, or you can actually display it or communicate your QDOS, things like that. So it's, this actually is the um, same poster I showed earlier, but as part of um, a conference paper presentation, so that's my conference details up there, also the name of the paper. Uh, it has 75 reads through um, research. I think that one is what I think you about the same. But 75 extra reads over above the conference. So it might be, you are for you're going into your CV. Uh, some people might need to read it, look at it. So also, if they know it's going to be there, or think, well, that, uh, there was that strange person I talked to who was looking about information about concrete. Um, I'll type in their name um, on the word type conference and concrete into academia.edu and see what I find. I couldn't get to talk to them then, but I can see their post now. So it's really about using things um, more than once. I think that's all the thing about social media marketing is you don't just take the photograph, you use the photograph to Instagram, uh, you comment on it in Facebook, and you make sure everyone knows about it through Twitter. It's that good virtuous circle we've got that's something more different these days. Um, there are also sites where you can share your posters. Um, no, I'm not quite sure about some of these. Some of these are a bit more naff. The ones like Research Gate are very much what everyone else uses in terms of working with things. Um, one, two websites to go to, I'll put the things online. Um, there are loads of places online, Craft Summit posters, Adobe.com, InDesign Illustrator. Some people swear by PowerPoint for designing posters, but personally, um, being a kind of, uh, trained on, in terms of the graphic design side of things, I'd much rather someone use InDesign. It takes a while to learn, but there are a lot of online resources for learning how to use it. Um, compared to Word, the point about Word, you put a picture in place and put things on it, then move something else before you turn around, all moves. Think about something like InDesign, things go in place and stay in place. You can flow text around them. Also, some of the things like, in terms of design, the Mac one, this one here is in fact a six column design. You ever get any magazines, um, ladies or just magazines, no matter what it is. You, if you have a look at the way they're designed, you see columns. This one here is six columns. You've got one column there. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, a six column design allows you to have, as well here, you've got three columns, but also allows you to have picture and a column text alongside it. So sometimes things are, things that are obvious aren't very obvious in terms of design. It makes things flow a little bit better because it has a, a unifying theme visually behind it. Uh, that's getting more into graphic design, admittedly. But if you look at magazines and see how they're laid out, use some of those ideas. Oh, if a magazine does it this way, perhaps that would look good as a poster. Um, open source, you don't have to buy the programs, although don't forget the whole Adobe Creator Suite is available for free on university computers. Um, you go into any any other computers and PCs, you've got Lightroom, they've got Photoshop, InDesign on them, or available to download, anyway. Um, there are open source graphics programs, uh, free templates, a lot of free templates online for scientific posters. If you're not quite sure how to design one, go online and pinch a template. Uh, okay, they may be encouraging you to um, buy things or, or make your posters print through them. Uh, that is that last one. Uh, makescience.com, they obviously want to sell you the production process. They actually have around about, I looked the other day, about seven or eight tutorials on the process. So the color, text, you know, what you're meant to do, how to design things properly. So there's a lot of help and support out there beyond what we're doing today. <coughs>